Today, we're going to be looking at the Alpha 6. This particular unit is hooked up with a 5 inch cylinder and it has a box wedge and table grade on it. I'm going to be taking you through the machine uh, in detail, part by part. And then over here on the trailer, I also have all the parts individually laid out so we can go through some of the unique features that this Alpha 6 machine has to make you split firewood faster. So we're going to start over here. We've got our Honda GX630 engine. This engine here, it's a two-cylinder engine, makes 20 horsepower at 3,600 RPM. It's got an hour meter on it, electric start, choke and throttle. The engine's hooked up to this salami pump. This is a two-stage pump. It's made in Italy. It's a high quality, very efficient, 90% efficiency plus pump, generating 28 gallons per minute in the high stage and 10 gallons a minute in the low stage. Over here, we have a 30 gallon hydraulic tank. That keeps the uh, fluid well conditioned between cycles. We also have an oil cooler. This is thermostatically controlled. It comes on at 180 degrees Fahrenheit and it goes off at 140 degrees Fahrenheit. That increases your lifespan of all the seals on your cylinders, your pumps, and your valves. 10 micron filter right here, 70 gallon per minute. All the fluid is getting filtered coming through with the exception of the return on the cylinder going through this dump valve right here. That lowers your back pressure in the return, increasing the speed. Whole machine weighs about 3,000 pounds going down the road. It's got a two inch ball hitch on the front. This is removable. As you saw earlier, I got my knee. You can avoid that by pulling this pin here, put that underneath. You don't have to worry about hitting your knee. Other advantage of that, if you want to leave a job site, pretty hard to steal this machine if it doesn't have a hitch. We've got 13 inch wheels with tires. You can tow this machine down the road 35 miles an hour, go from job site to job site. Right here, you've got a seven gallon fuel tank, fills up right here. That allows you for pretty much all day run time. Unless you've got three guys and you're really working it, you might end up with more like six, seven hours, but with one guy, you can run a solid eight hour shift with this fuel tank. So this is the uh, working end of the machine. We've got our box wedge equipped on this machine. This box wedge is a pretty unique feature uh, for Timberwolf. It allows you to make four and a half inch, pretty much perfect squares without any retouching. Combined with this pullback arm, block falls into the chamber, bottom four and a half inches get sliced off. The remaining wood sits up here, pullback arm slides it into the chamber to go again with minimal hands. Safer faster, more efficient. You've got your giant push block right here. That is hooked up to our five inch cylinder with a three and a half inch rod. That provides for a very fast retract time and also it's a very robust cylinder. Should last a lifetime of the machine. This is our optional table grate, 30 inches long. From here to there, it has a slight up angle. That gives a little bit of resistance to let more of the fines fall out underneath here. And this can be going into a pile or onto a conveyor to load your truck with relatively clean firewood. This is in the transport position. So what you do to deploy it, lift up the pullback arm. It's all pivoting right here on the push block. Set it down carefully on the valve. Then you take your pullback or your lift, block lift cylinder, block lift arm and deploy it. Put this back here, watch your ears, ready to go. Three spool valve right here is all your controls. You've got your splitter control. So that's sending fluid through here into the cylinder, push the cylinder forward, splits the wood. You have to hold it in forward for safety. Once you want to come back, it'll detent back. That sends fluid into this hose, into the cap end of the cylinder, driving the fluid out of the back end into the tank. This is our dump valve right here. So instead of all that fluid going back through the valve, when it's retracting, a little pilot signal opens up this valve you can see here, a lot of the fluid is going to go direct into tank. That's going to reduce your back pressure, increasing your speed, better oil condition. It'll automatically pop out once it's retracted. You've got your wedge lift here with the box wedge on. The wedge lift is an ancillary feature. It's not required. When you have your four and six way on, you get eight inches of travel right from here. So you can lift the wedge up and down, center that log, get good quality wood. Then over here, you've got your log lift. So it goes down and then it goes up. This will come up to just above horizontal. 
So that'll assist you in getting the bigger blocks into the chamber, but it won't flip them all in and roll on top of you. When you're doing smaller blocks, you can leave that table up. This is a closed center valve, so that table will stay up and you can use it as a workbench. So you can have your helper put small pieces on there and then slide the wood in. So all together, uh, this package here is probably one of the best log splitters you can buy for the money uh, and even for not the money. It's a very productive machine. Three guys operating this machine, two guys feeding the blocks, one guy running the valve. With this particular wedge on it, you can easily count on two plus full cords an hour of wood. That's 8,000 plus pounds of hardwood an hour. Great return on your investment. All right, now that we've had an overview of this machine in full, I want to take you over to our trailer over here and take a look at the individual components up close. We're going to be showing you the build quality and some of the unique features that you can't really see when the machine is all put together. So on this trailer we've got a lot of the components laid out just so it makes it easy to see. Uh, we're going to start here with our 28 gallon per minute pump. Uh, again this is a salami pump, it's made over in Italy, it's very efficient, it's a Giroler pump so it's running 90 plus percent efficiency in comparison to your standard gear pump uh, those are running usually 80-85% efficiency. So you're going to get not only higher speeds with this pump, you're also going to get better fluid condition. This is a two-section uh, aluminum pump. So you have aluminum housing with steel gears. That way the uh, wear, aluminum wears with steel very well. So you're not going to get a bunch of uh, shards of metal in your fluid and stuff over time. Uh, you've got cast iron caps on the end and you've got these four bolts that retain the two pump sections together. We've got a number 16, that's a one inch suction line inlet on this here. We use a barb fitting there and that'll draw fluid out of the tank into our two sections. When these two sections are working together when the, and the engine's spinning at 3,600 RPM, it's gonna drive through this number 12 line over here, 28 gallons a minute. Here you have a pressure relief valve and a pressure kick out over here. When this pump senses 1,150 PSI on the machine, it's actually going to kick out the first stage of this pump and only send fluid through the second stage. That's gonna reduce the flow to approximately 11 gallons per minute, which is going to allow the engine to generate 3,000 PSI of force to split through the gnarliest logs. That's going to equate to about 5,500 pounds of splitting force with a 5 inch cylinder and 29,000 pounds with a 4 inch cylinder. So that's our pump. Once the fluid travels through this line, its first stop is going to be this three spool valve we talked about earlier. This valve here, it's got large ports. You can see here on the splitter ports, these are number 12s. So that's a three quarter inch line. That uh, lets us flow at a high rate with minimal resistance, reducing heat, increasing speed. The spools, there are three of them in row. This first one back here, you'll see this uh, pressure detent. So this allows you to hold this valve down and until it sees 3000 PSI, that'll stay kicked out like that. That allows the log to retract automatically. When this sees 3000 PSI, it'll kick out. Up front here, we have a system pressure relief and this is set at 3000 psi so this will not allow any part of the hydraulic system to see more than 3000 psi and that's for safety so we're not blowing lines and seals and castings on the valve so that's your pressure relief there the fluid can then travel from your main splitter section to these two other ancillary sections one's going to drive your wedge lift and one's going to drive your block lift these ports here, they're smaller lines. We're using a 3 8 line, number six, to uh, drive these. They're not used very often and they have a much lower demand for fluid, so we don't need to use a big number 12 line. Once the fluid has gone through all the functions, it's gonna go back into the valve and then towards the tank and filtration device through this number 12 line over here. A few things about the uh, Prince valve that makes it a good valve. First off, it's a uh, American made product uh, in Iowa actually. It's a, a casting that's finely machined with all the ports and then these stainless steel spools are installed in them. The spools are unique between each valve so that this spool has bigger orifices to allow for higher flow than these two other spools. As you can see here on the handle 
the handle has a pivot point down here so when you apply pressure outward you're not applying any lateral motion on that spool so that's going to increase your longevity of the seals within the spool should your seals fail and they will over time this is probably a 400,000 cycle uh, seal the uh, spool can be removed by these allens here you can take the spool out and on the inside you'll have your seals and you can replace them put them back together and you'll be good for another 400,000 cycles so it's a this valve should last the lifetime of the machine after the valve the fluid is going to travel and we're just going to concentrate on the splitting cycle so it's going to travel through this port here into our five inch cylinder the alpha is available with a four inch cylinder for high speed or a five inch cylinder for high force the five inch cylinder is about 50 percent more powerful than the four inch but then again 50 percent slower this cylinder here it's made custom for us by westcraft manufacturing down in texas and it's got some special features first off three and a half inch rod this is a solid piece of stainless steel three and a half inches around into a five inch bore cylinder so we also have number 20 which is inch and a quarter ports on the front and the back what that allows that reduces a lot of the back pressure for the fluid to get out of that cylinder the less back pressure you have we've gone over this many times but that can't stress that enough how much that does to help reduce your temperatures and increase your speeds by reducing back pressures on the retract so this port here that's going into what we're going to call the blind side of the cylinder and that's where your splitting force occurs so when this rod is retracted all the way it's 26 inches travel you have your cap of the cylinder right there the fluid is forced into that end and has nowhere else to go but forward and that pushes the cylinder forward until this point here that distance there is 26 inches once it reaches the end of stroke the spool valve will be shifted into reverse and then fluid is going through this port here and it's driving on the what we call the cap end of the cylinder driving that back to here so all the fluid that you put into this back end of the cylinder is now coming out of this side now there's a differential in volumes because this is a full five inches when you're driving it forward so you have that much more volume when you're driving fluid this way it's being displaced by this rod so you're going to travel back twice as fast as you travel forward which also means that if you put 28 gallons a minute here you get 56 gallons a minute out this end and that's a lot of flow and that's why on the machine we install our dump valve this cross tube here is going to be connected to our push block over here so here we have our push block and pull back arm system so the alpha 6 can be equipped with your box wedge or your 4 and 6 way wedge when you have the 4 and 6 way wedge you're going to have your push block and all of your anti-wear components down here plus your mounting hardware when you have the box wedge installed you're also going to have this pullback arm which slides through this tube on the push block you notice the grease fittings there and the precision machining here that's all done in-house with our snap ring grooves that hold them into place let's talk about a little bit of these individual components starting with the push block first off this is a massive piece of steel you've got one inch plate here and here 18 inches across at the width 12 inches in height 18 inches in length 10 inches wide along with that one inch steel you have your main clevis gussets back here and then you have your reinforcing gussets here these are made out of half inch this is one inch and then to add breadth to our pin we have a three quarter inch piece of steel in here so all together you have over three inches of contact area on your pin so when you have 57,000 pounds of force it's all being transmitted through this pin but because of that contact area you get minimal pin wear over time our pins are all machined in-house and you can see our snap ring grooves that gets them set in there and then prevents them from moving from side to side in our machined holes here this tube here quarter inch wall three inch I, or two and a half inch ID uh, piping with these grease certs installed this is where your pullback arm slides into we use a round tube that allows the pullback arm to float with the wedge as it goes works its way through the knots in the wood reducing the amount of load that's in those uh, structures 
Over here, we have our oil impregnated nylon. This is actually what prevents any metal to metal contact with our steel. So this sits underneath our push block and on top of our beam. These holes here are for grease. So you're putting grease through your grease certs here. And then that's actually getting absorbed by this nylon and that slides on top of our beam, minimizing friction and reducing wear. This is a sacrificial wear component. It will wear out over time, but you'll never get metal on metal wear. All you have to do is replace this and you have a basically a lifetime frame. This is held in with our spacer plates and this is what guides it side to side against your I-beam. And then underneath, you have our wear strips, and these grab the bottom of the I-beam, so when you get any lift, this prevents the lifts. Again, we have grease certs installed here. That's gonna put grease in between this and the bottom of that I-beam, you know, reducing uh, friction and wear altogether. These are held in with 5 8 bolts. They're four inches long. All of our bolts that we use, and hardware, it's all American-made grade eight bolts. So that is our pull back arm and push block system, which drives the wood through our different wedges, which we'll talk about next. So this wedge, it'll slide right into the uh, frame of the alpha and the wedge lift will react to the bottom of here. There's no pins or anything to hold it in place that allows it to float through with the grain of the wood. It also allows it an easy swap out if you wanna go between the four and the six way. So here you have our box wedge. This is our four and a half inch box wedge. We also offer it in a three and a half inch height and a two and a half inch height, but this is by far our most popular size. This wedge here is also completely built out of AR400 steel with the exceptions of these uh, hole plates here and our back section where there's no load being transmitted. But this whole plate here, all the vertical wings and our main center beam is all AR400. Again, it's a very hard steel as we talked about earlier. Uh, the machining and the geometry on this wedge is quite a bit different than our four-way. Uh, it's attacking the wood in stages. So you have your first main horizontal split, and that's going to take the bottom four and a half inch pieces of your block right here and cut that. It's going to travel one inch into that block before it hits our center split. Now, if you notice, this blade here has a very light angle on it, and that reduces the amount of displacement as the wood goes through that center piece. So as it hits that center split, it's also hitting our two outside splits. And this has quite an aggressive angle on it. What that does is it actually diverts that outside piece away to make room for this final stage split back here, which is at half the angle of this. So you're gonna get one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of wood for every four and a half inch chunk that you get out. We've got nine inches between this center and that center, and then four and a half inches between this center and that center here. And then between this point and this point, we also have four and a half inches. So you're gonna get four pieces that are exactly four and a half inches. And then your outside pieces, they'll be four and a half inches tall, but they will vary in width depending on your starting diameter of the log. So what that means is really up to about 20, 24 inch pieces of wood. You never have to touch the wood that goes through this wedge. That's ideal. Now, a little bit more about the structure and the strength. These pieces, again, they're all AR400. With these plates tying it together, that's minimizing your lateral displacement, allowing us to use half inch steel instead of one inch steel, like a lot of competitors have started to do. And that provides less resistance, so you're gonna cut through bigger, gnarlier wood with that. Our center blade, it's one inch AR and that's where the main load is being transmitted to the frame. It is fully welded with a triple pass weld along this seam here. At the bottom, you'll notice a pinhole. This allows you to lock the wedge into height so that you get no variance at all with the wood. It only allows for a half inch up and down motion to travel through knots and whatnot. All right, so each Alpha 6 is equipped with two of these 7,000 pound jacks, one on each side. These are welded to this half inch plate and they're bolted on to the alpha. That way if you ever damage the jack, you can easily replace it uh, down the road. Uh, we put two of these jacks on there for two reasons. First off, stability and also for uh, allowing it to windrow. So by windrow, I mean with these two jacks with the big plate on hard ground, as you develop a pile of firewood, 
once the pile gets to a certain size, it'll start to push the machine back and you can just keep making a bigger and bigger uh, pile of fire without having to move your machine. So that's a pretty convenient feature and that's why we use these big jacks with the large plate. Other reason why we use the two jacks is this way you can level the machine. So if you're not quite on level ground, you can alter one to the other to get the machine level so everything works better. Now, we'll talk about this optional table grate we have right here. So this table grate, it's pretty big. You're looking at almost 40 inches across on the width wise here and then 30 inches long. It's made out of one by one eighth inch wall tubing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 of them. And those are welded to back here. You can see where it bolts on to the machine. You've got your bolt plate back there. You've got your uh, grade eight bolts that go through these holes. And that puts it right up on the front of the machine for a sturdy uh, fit. And then you've got these side wings here. So this is long so it can uh, clean out a lot of the debris and fines from the wood splitting and then it's wide so it catches a vast majority of wood coming out of that machine no matter what the diameter is. It's uh, you know fairly, fairly robust and heavy made. This is quarter inch steel here, half inch plate as we said there, and another quarter inch plate here. All together it's, uh, you know, it's built to last and it's a pretty useful option. All right, so here, this is what we call our dump valve. So this sits on the back end of the cylinder and you can see here, looking down through it, this allows fluid to come from this port here and then a cartridge goes in here and when that cartridge opens up, fluid's allowed to go back to tank directly, bypassing our main spool valve. And this is how the cartridge is fired. Your pilot line from your rod end of the cylinder comes in here and actually opens up that cartridge. So this aluminum block, it's machine all in house and we get some cartridges in there and this is going to reduce your back pressure by about 300 psi in the alpha allowing for a fast retract speed. So over here we have our hydraulic tank. This tank is made in-house uh, just for the alpha. Uh, we'll start down here. We've got our number 16 bung. This is for our suction line and that'll hook up directly to the pump and uh, it's down low and the pump sits down low so you get a little head pressure on the pump this way and uh, that makes it last a little longer. It's never pulling air as it tries to develop the suction or the vacuum. Uh, up top here, you've got a number 20 port, and then you've got a number 12 port. The number 20 port, that is your return line off your dump valve, and uh, it goes right into there, and we use a big port. You know, that's for, uh, again, that low back pressure. And then the number 12 port is for your return off your oil cooler and filter. And uh, so between the two, you're getting all the uh, fluid back into the tank. Now these sit up high here. If you look inside, these are going into a bent tube and the tube falls about a 30 degree angle all the way over here. In between the exit of your oil and your suction line, we actually have a baffle that's welded in like this. And there's some holes and passageways in there. So that allows is we needed the bungs up on this side for the hose route to be good. And by putting that tube inside the tank, you're separating as far as possible the fluid coming out of your work section, like your cooler and your uh, cylinders. And you, it has to stay in the tank and travel around the baffle before it gets back into the suction line. So that's gonna allow for higher resonance time and um, evener heat dissipation throughout the tank. So you've got that going on there. And here, this is our filler neck ring. A lot of guys don't do this, but what we have here is a uh, half inch piece of steel with our tap holes uh, machined into them. And that's welded and sealed on top of the tank. So if for any reason this tank isn't perfectly flat and you're getting a lot of rain, your gasket isn't having to keep out all that water because you'll never get a half inch of uh, water sitting on top of this tank. So that's gonna keep your tank nice and dry. So that's over there. You come around this side, which is gonna be the outside of the machine. You see these two holes here, that's where your site level gauge goes, and that also has a built-in thermostat. So we fill the oil when the machine is full of fluid all together with the lines and everything. Our cold fill line is right about halfway there. That leaves about two and a half, three inches for expansion room in the tank. As the fluid heats up, it's gonna get bigger, and you'll notice as you watch that, your fluid level actually rise the longer you run the machine, and then as it cools off, it'll go down. That's perfectly normal. And then finally down here, we have our drain bung. That's just a three quarter inch port. Uh, you know, we plug that, so if you ever wanna change your fluid, it's real easy to do down there. Uh, whole tank's constructed out of eighth inch steel. 
you've got one wrap here and then one wrap all the way around there to minimize the weld seams. And then it's all pressure tested in-house. We have to hold 90 PSI for about a minute uh, with air. And then we do a seam test with uh, soapy water to make sure it's all sealed good. So that's our hydraulic tank right there. So next we're gonna be looking at our oil cooler. Now this oil cooler is standard in Alpha 6 and it's an electrically powered oil cooler. And what it does is your hot oil comes in through on this side on the upper port and it works its way through this little radiator and it exits on this lower port down here. And from there, it's gonna go into your filter and your filter back into your tank. So this oil cooler, as you'll notice over here, you have this port here and that, we take that out, we put in a thermal couple and that's designed to close the circuit to turn this fan on plugged into this little harness here when this reaches 180 degrees Fahrenheit. When that thermal couple goes below 140, it's going to open that circuit and then turn the fan off. That way you're not running the fan you know, when, you, when your oil isn't warm enough. Ideal operating temperature is right around 160, 180 degrees. That's where all the pressures are set right, so that's where you want to maintain it. So this little cooler here, it's got a fan, 12 volt powered fan on the back side, and it's actually gonna suck air through this side and blow out warm air there. So that's gonna increase your you know, heat transfer through the air as you go. All right, and the final piece we're gonna look at today is our block lift system. So I've got here three components. I've got our block lift table itself. And you can see that this is pretty heavy duty construction, quarter inch plate here, quarter inch plate there, uh, inch and a half, inch and a half, quarter inch wall angle down there. And then on the back side, you can see it's all heavily reinforced. Quarter inch plate runner here, and then 3 16 there. That's giving it some torsional rigidity. Uh, then at the top here, you've got a tube that's welded through, and that's actually our pivot point. So that's directly welded into this quarter inch runner. We call them hockey sticks internally. If you see them unassembled, they look just like a hockey stick. Uh, one inch solid rod goes through there and that's what it pivots around. And then these three holes here, their function is they hold this. And uh, we call this the shark fin. And this is kind of unique to us. So uh, the shark fin here bolts on here. And then we have one inch of adjustment and our assembly crew is going to adjust this either this way or that way. And that's how we set the angle to be just above level. Now you notice this curve on the shark fin. What's this do? Well. This is our rocker right here. This rocker reacts with this block lift and it rolls up and down. That allows pin-free deployment and this angle, it's actually a curve as it goes down. So as it's coming up at the end, it slows down. So you try to avoid throwing that block of wood. So that's what's going on here. And uh, heavy duty pieces, that's a one inch piece right there. This is all half inch pieces here with a one inch clevis in the middle you know, all, all very heavy duty. And uh, there's your block lift system. Uh, so we've gone through a lot of parts here uh, today on the machine. We've gone through the machine in detail. So uh, the next step is we're gonna, we're gonna run some wood through and see what she does. So let's get going. Well, that didn't take long. We kind of went a little overboard. That's, uh, that's a real big truckload there. It'd be a little hard to take that down the road, but we'll see. Now, if you look in this truck here, you notice I hardly ever touch those blocks. My buddy Luke was doing all the work, and uh, that's the size of wood you're getting with this four and a half inch box wedge. 
this is all real nice size. This is 20 inches long, but you know, 16 would do the same difference. And that's ready to season real nice and burn. Take a look in here, we've got nothing but beautiful firewood ready to go. 